Today we're reviewing in depth the Sony 70 to 200 f 2.8 G Master. This lens does not need an introduction. It's an absolute legend. It's a beast and it's incredibly expensive. So with some competition finally, in this day and age, does this thing actually live up to that amazingly high price tag? That's one of the things we're gonna talk about today, as well as everything else that you need to know to determine whether or not you should be considering it. Let's get started. So here it is, the amazing 70 to 200 f 2.8 G Master. I'm a little late to the party, I must admit, but this thing is just something that needed some time. And I have spent the last few months thoroughly testing this thing. I've taken it up mountains, I've taken thousands of photos and tons of video with this thing. So I can definitely tell you that without a doubt, I am ready for my full in-depth review and my thoughts for you guys to do with this lens. Here's some specs to get you going as usual. And if you haven't seen one of my videos before, my name's Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you like this video and it helps you out, consider hitting that like and subscribe button, of course. And I want to also answer who this lens is for. This is not a beginner's lens. This is a professional lens. that's gonna give you absolutely outstanding results in pretty much every aspect, whatever you're looking for. It's amazing, but it's also very expensive as I mentioned. So we're gonna talk about that we're going to talk a little bit about some of its competitors these days. Is this thing actually worth the price nowadays? We're going to talk about that. But first, as usual, we're going to jump into the build and features of this guy. Let's dive right in and have a look. So looking at what's in the box, in typical Sony fashion, there's not a heck of a lot. They do include a nice soft case with a strap. And that's pretty much it aside from some paperwork, the lens and a lens hood. Now with most G Master lenses, and this one not being an exception, the initial look and feel of this lens is fantastic. You know it's made from quality materials, and it's mainly a metal construction in this case. With the lens hood installed, it measures only 11 inches long, and without just shy of 8 inches. It does have a bit of heft to it as well, weighing 1480 grams, or about 3 and a quarter pounds. The large and grippy front focus ring turns incredibly smoothly, accurately, and just feels right. The zoom ring is equally enjoyable, being a very short throw, giving you incredibly fast and easy target acquisition. One of my favorite features, and definitely worth noting, is that this lens is completely internally focusing. So the size you see is the size you get. Not only is this great for overall balance of the lens, but it gives me added confidence when it comes to weather sealing and just getting out there in every environment. It has not one, not two, but three completely customizable focus hold buttons. And as far as your convenient buttons and switches are concerned, you're covered with your automatic manual focus switch, focus limiter switch, image stabilization of course, and a mode switch which is going to be great for panning. There's also an easily adjustable and removable tripod collar, which is going to be great in multitude of situations when you want to throw it on the tripod or just get it out of the way. On the front, you'll find 77 millimeter filter threads, as well as Sony's patented nano AR coating to help eliminate flare and ghosting. On the back, a nice sturdy metal mount, and luckily for Sony, a little rubber gasket. This lens is very well weather sealed, and one of the few that I've felt extremely comfortable in every situation that I've taken it, including incredibly dusty and wet situations. So before I forget, I want to also mention one of the features that I love about this lens is its manual focus override. And that means you don't have to go ahead and switch this over to manual. You can actually just use your manual focus ring and pretty much nail focus every time when you've got tricky birds or if you wanna capture something just behind you know, some foreground or something, that's gonna be a fantastic option. And I love that aspect of this lens, something that the newer Tamron 70 to 180 does not do, nor does the 100 to 400, and I really wish it that it did. So uh, keep that in mind. As far as build and features are concerned as a whole, this thing has pretty much everything that I would ever want in a lens, and I give it a rare five stars. Next, let's talk about the value of this lens. And we do have some comparables, of course. This lens comes in at an incredible 2400 US dollars, which is probably at the top of most people's budgets. And again, this is a professional lens. 
There is the 70 to 200 F4, which is a great performer, but a little bit slower. And of course, we finally have some competition coming out of the woodwork, most notably the Tamron 70 to 180, much cheaper and decently performing, but definitely not in the same class. I do have a review and comparison videos on all of these lenses, but in this case, and in everything photography, you always get what you pay for, and I give this lens four stars for value. Now let's look at where this lens really shines. Performance. If I could describe this lens in a word, it would be easy. It's brilliant, it's effortless, and whatever you point it at, whether you're shooting stills or video, you're gonna get beautiful results. When you look at the autofocus, this lens is very fast, very accurate. It's not the fastest out there, and it does prioritize accuracy over speed, which is fine by me so you don't get a lot of nasty hunting. But I've used this lens in every situation, good and bad light, it works great. For you video shooters, I found that this lens worked just as well in video as it does for stills. The versatile focal range and the fast f2.8 make it great for events, even indoors. Even the lens hood is beautiful and designed for work with video. It has a little trap door to easily access all your filters. As far as manual focus is concerned, I have to admit I don't use it a heck of a lot, but its experience is accurate and smooth for the most part. There's some lenses that you pick up and you just don't click with. This is not one of those lenses. The character of this lens is absolutely beautiful. Its rendering is sharp and yet it's dreamy. The colors and contrast come through beautifully. The bokeh is absolutely incredible with its 11 aperture blades. And it has an impressive minimum focus distance, making this thing just a jack of all trades. And of course, animal as well as human eye autofocus works amazingly. So is it gonna be great for portraits? Of course it is. How about landscape? Absolutely. There's really nothing that you can throw at this lens that's not gonna give you absolutely beautiful results. If you ask me, it's almost perfect. Here's a look at the image stabilization in action, a very welcome feature, especially when you're working way out at 200 millimeters. Now let's have a detailed look at the sharpness and optics of this lens. Here at 70 millimeters wide open at f2.8, the center of the image is quite good and the corners are, well, also quite good. Nothing mind blowing here, but stop down to f4 for a noticeable improvement and your best image is gonna be from about f5.6 to 6.3 in my experience. Your image quality is gonna to continue to be great all the way down to about F11. And of course, after F11 down to about F20 is where you're gonna to start to see that diffraction and softness creep back in. Having a look here at 200 millimeters on the long end, wide open at F2.8 once again, nothing absolutely mind blowing. The center's quite good, but the corners are adequate, we'll call it. Not a bad performance, but nothing special. When you stop down to F4, however, you do see a noticeable improvement. And once again, your best image quality is gonna be at about F5.6 to 6.3. Stopping down all the way down to F8. And after F11, once again, you're gonna to start to see that softness creep back in. So all around a good performance from this lens. Having a look at the distortion and vignetting of this lens, here at 70 millimeters wide open is where you're gonna notice it the most. There is some distortion and a little bit of vignetting. Either stop down to F4 or enable that profile correction to see that fixed right up. At 200 millimeters wide open at f2.8, it's pretty much the same story. Quite heavy vignetting and a little bit of distortion. Once again, stop down or use that profile correction. All around this lens is quite impressive optically. No complaints here. If you are interested to see how this lens performs with a teleconverter on, here it is with a 1.4 times teleconverter at 200, which essentially makes it 280 millimeters and its maximum aperture is now f4. You can see here that there's a tiny loss of quality maybe if you're pixel peeping, but pretty much it's a great performance. Stop down for a bit of an improvement, but overall if you are looking to get yourself a teleconverter for this lens or say the 100 to 400, I would say definitely pick it up. A great option for travelers or people just wanting to get a little bit more reach out of their lenses without going too crazy. 
I do have a few more videos on teleconverters if you're interested in looking at this in a bit more detail, but generally besides the loss of one stop of light, you'll also notice the loss of just a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of autofocus performance, and I do notice that eye autofocus doesn't work quite as well. And that's pretty much it. But as far as the size and the weight is concerned, it's just a great tool to have. When you need it, you can throw it in your bag and forget about it, although it is a little bit pricey. Here's a look at what the 70 to 200 focal length looks like with and without the teleconverter, as well as crop mode on the a7 III. When it comes to rating performance as a whole for this lens, Sony's really made a fantastic lens here, a masterpiece and a marvel of engineering, and I give it four and a half solid stars. So wrapping up guys, you kind of have an idea about what I think of this lens now. As usual, here's all my personal pros and cons. Rating this lens as a whole, it's very close to perfection, but also very expensive, and therefore I give it four and a half solid stars. And if you're a subscriber, you also know that I like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. And in this case, if you are an avid photographer, a professional, or somebody wanting to take their photos easily to the next level, and you've got the budget, I definitely recommend this bad boy. So there it is guys, there's my review of the Sony 70 to 200 f 2.8 G Master. I hope this helped you out and I hope you liked this video and if it did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Drop all your questions and your comments down below. If you're ready to pick this lens up, I'll drop affiliate links in the description as usual. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.